Managing distributed infrastructure at the edge is fundamentally different from running traditional cloud environments. You are dealing with thousands of remote sites, limited resources, and the need for absolute reliability without any compromise. And if you add security and scalability requirements, then suddenly you are looking at extremely complex operation challenges for telecom operators and enterprises. And that's where open source shine. And today we have with us Talis Kirby, a member of the Starling X Technical Steering Committee at the Open Info Foundation. As you all know, Starling X is an open source distributed cloud platform designed specifically for edge computing. And the project just released version 11.0 with some major enhancement. Talis, it's great to have you on the show. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Talis. For those who may not know, please talk about what is Starling X and what is specific problem does it solve for organizations deploying infrastructure at the edge? Yeah, okay. So Starling X is a project. It's actually a big project. And it's basically, I like to, to explain it like a, a stack of software, right? So basically, we, we combine several open source components like Linux, Ceph, Kubernetes, and OpenStack services. And, and, then, and then we provide this platform for cloud, um, cloud native applications to run in a distributed fashion, focusing on the edge if you need. So the idea is to provide something that is flexible and reliable enough for, for any, any use case that requires uh, cloud infrastructure in a scripted manner and in a way that you can automate uh, all your operations and be and be safe that this will work in day two and day three and like in the end of the day, right? So that's basically, I, I would say that if you ask about a differentiator, and I would say that the differentiator is like combining all those pieces together and and providing this um, this platform uh, focus that that any industry which requires like low latency and processing requirements on the edge not on the edge, but in a distributed fashion, they can benefit from it, right? As we all know and mentioned, Starling X is used across different edge scenarios. Can you walk us through some of the primary use cases and how does the platform address the unique requirements of IoT deployments, 5G networks, and ORAN infrastructure? Starling X is on the, I think we'll talk about this later, but it's on the release number 11 already. And I joined the, the, the project five years ago. And, and I know that since even bef before the time I'm working uh, with Starling X, I know that the main use case was telco providers. So there are some telco providers running solutions based on Starling X in their backbone. And, and the idea is that we can provide um, a Linux kernel uh, which can be the standard one or the real-time one. So if you select to use the real-time, you already benefit from, from all Linux real-time and all latency capabilities. And, and then we do integrate what we call uh, uh, cloud-native applications. So it's not only a Kubernetes deployment, but a set of Starling X specific services that are there for managing and, and monitoring all your workloads, all your nodes, and all the health status. And there's a lot of automation going on there to ensure that we do the most that we can for auto recovery uh, when it's needed. So, so at the end of the day, the user is more focused on, on the application that's running there and can be can ensure that, that there will be a, a high level of reliability there and like, I know that there are some companies using that and they are using for a while. So I think this is the best proof that the, the efforts are targeted directly on the right way. But, but you, sorry, you asked me about some, some specific technologies and I can name some here. So for example, um, we do integrate the PDK there. Um, if someone is running virtualized, uh, workloads on, on OpenStack, there, there are two options. They can use the, the, the kernel virtual switch or the virtual switch with the PDK, which brings from kernel to user space the processing of packages. So you gain a lot of, of performance on, on the network side. Uh, we do have uh, several uh, features and capabilities to configure and affine uh, CPUs 
So you can isolate the CPUs and make sure that those CPUs are being used for the correct application that you want to run over there. And yeah, I think those are two that come from the top of my head right now. Starling X has been deployed in production by major telecom operators around the world. What makes the platform so reliable and attractive for those large scale mission critical environments? And through these deployments, what have you learned to further improve the project? Yeah, I mean, that's the good part of an open source community and an open source project because the, the cycle of feedback is complete, right? So you deliver something, people use that, and they, they come with problems and with issues, and then you solve that, and then you release it again. And there's a lot of uh, community work and contribution happening there. So, like I was saying, there are several services focusing on the monitoring and and on the reliability of the system. And I think that's what brings like uh, a good power and a good co out control that the user doesn't need to be there all the time. There is some level of automation managing that. But 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 you were mentioning about the players that are running, right? Uh, one thing that we, we figured out during this, this journey is that um, release will bring enhancements, right? But going from one release to the other must be a friendly experience and a smooth experience, right? And especially when we are talking about distributed systems and large scale systems with like hundreds, maybe thousands of nodes, uh, the way you do the upgrade must be way controlled. So that's something that I saw in the previous, let's say, three or four years. The community has a lot. Uh, the softwares, the software managed services that we use to to deploy upgrades and to upgrade the the platform from one version to the other, right? So I think this is a this is a good a good proof that showcases like the the benefits of the community work and this feedback loop of what what needs to be improved when you are running this on day one and day two of the operation. Now let's talk about the new release which you mentioned, version 11.0. Can you talk about with this release, there is a strong focus on reliability, security, and scalability. What are the most impactful enhancements are there in this release? Which features do you think will have the biggest impact on production deployments? I think this release is delivering the, the state of art on, the, on what we call the, the software management uh, services which makes the both the upgrade between releases and also the patching of fixes uh, way easier and way more automated and under control. And I know that other groups are also working and they delivered good stuff on, on the networking side and security for the network side. So pod to pod traffic is now encrypted in a way that we can take the load from the application that is running there and ensuring that the platform networks are, are properly secure. Um, and like, I'm, I'm currently the, the project lead of the StarlingX OpenStack, which is one of the applications that you can install on top of the platform. And this is a, this application is basically to provide a virtualized, uh, sorry, a containerized distribution of OpenStack to run virtualized loads. And that group did a, a big enhancement on, on this release. So we integrated with the hookseth, which was already delivered in the platform. Uh, so we are talking, we, we are able to use hookseth as the as the storage backend for OpenStack right now. And we integrated the, the OpenV switch with the PDK as well. Like I was saying, the, the PDK is an important piece for performance on the network and the OpenStack load can benefit from it now. So, so yeah, I think this, those are the, the biggest markers on, on this release. When I was reading the press release, I noticed that this release also introduces important technology integrations and upgrades. Can you explain how these integrations improve performance and operational efficiency for edge environments? Also, what should operators and developers pay attention to in this release? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's again like, um, let me use this Rook Ceph example, right? Uh, in the past, the, the Ceph used it to run on the host of the platform. And there was a set of specific configurations for the storage of the platform. And even if you apply the OpenStack services on top, you would have to point to it as well. And the storage team did a great 
work on moving to the Rook Ceph, which is its newest version. It runs on the Kubernetes world. And, and actually on Starling X, you are able to, to configure nodes specific for storage. And, and then you point everything there. So the operations, you, you gain some, some efficiency. Of course, there is the network piece. Uh, between the, the I/O communication, but but you have storage efficiency there, right? So, so for example, we integrate the the starting X OpenStack with this Rookset solution, and we are able to benefit from that right now. Um, the, in the Kubernetes world, actually, the PDK is being used and supported for a while, but but in the OpenStack world, running on top of starting X. Uh, we just integrated OpenView Switch with the PDK uh, using the Debian latest versions, so so users can can launch their workloads uh, and benefit from this network performance. Uh, we are starting to this was not finalized on this release, but we are starting to explore like um, PCI pass through. So actually, we do support PCI pass through mainly for networking scenarios but people are starting to play with this for for gpus virtual gpus and and yeah I and mean, those are the examples that come to my mind right now like any open source project while telecom has been the primary adopter of Starling x the project is gaining traction in many other industries i mean linux is a good example when ARM wanted to join, people were like, what is ARM doing here? But now because of the ARM's requirement of being power efficient is now actually saving data centers millions and billions of dollars every year in cost efficiency. Can you talk about how is the community evolving to support the broader enterprise use cases and what role will this new release play in driving adoption beyond telecom? I, use, uh, I like to use the the mail list for the communities as a, as a measurement of the interactions and the new use case, because usually it's there where we, we figure out like how people are trying to use the solution around the world. So yes, there are telco players using this, but we saw like recently, we saw uh, engagement for, for other cloud related companies that um, they have like enterprise focused uh, use case. Uh, I mean, it's hard to, know exactly from other companies, but we know like overall that there is some interest on in automotive industry, uh, healthcare as well, but mainly like shifting towards the enterprise world. And, and actually we also got some questions from universities as well, people playing with that. And my personal feeling is that recently there was this new trend of people moving back to the OpenStack world especially in the, in the enterprise world. So Starling X is there, it's ready, and it can run OpenStack loads. So we saw the interest raising uh, on those points. But you you nailed, like you hit the spot when you said that this also bring new challenges, right? Uh, one thing that we, we realized during the, the release is that the documentation was very focused uh, <laughs> maintained and read by people that are using to the project. So so the, the learning curve was a bit step and the community is doing like a big effort on reviewing the documentation, making it more clear, more accessible and making it more objective to someone that is new and never played with, with Starnyx to be able to get a, a official build, deploy in a virtual environment, play with it, discover the capabilities and later move to a real hardware, right? So there are those two main uh, focus. One is the documentation side, which is like a very important piece, but also on the tooling for, for example, deploying a virtual a virtual setup just for you to understand and play with with, uh, with the platform, right? So so the community is doing, it's, it's not only on Starting X11, the community did a great enhancement on starting X10 as well, starting X9. And I think this will be an ongoing effort. Like as more people are interested on in using this, the more we will be enhancing our communication channels like the documentation. Thales, thank you so much for joining me and sharing these insights about Starling X and the evolution of edge computing infrastructure. The focus on reliability, scalability at the edge is critical for anyone building distributed systems today. 
Thanks for joining me today and I look forward to our next discussion. Thank you so much. And for those watching, please don't forget to subscribe, like this video and share it with your team. Thanks for watching.